40,000 casualties later in Iraq, 4,400 military, American military deaths in Iraq later. Would you say that is the single biggest miscalculation that the Bush administration made, that, Osama, that uh, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and must be stopped by those military men who went in there and found no weapons of mass destruction. Saddam, Saddam Hussein was a threat. He had used weapons of but mass destruction. But we now know he wasn't this a threat. This was not... Lawrence, are we going to do this with my answers or with your commentary? Uh, we had not um, focused on the fact, you have not focused on the fact, that Saddam Hussein had been a threat to the United States of America, to the Middle East, since he invaded Iran. Joining me now is Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, former Chief of Staff to Secretary of State Colin Powell, now a Professor of Government at the College of William & Mary. Thank you for joining me tonight, Colonel. Thanks for having me. Uh, Colonel, it was a very frustrating discussion, uh, trying to get uh, Condoleezza Rice to uh, respond to questions knowing what we know now. Whenever I would introduce what we know now, that, for example, Saddam Hussein was not a threat, uh, she would revert to 2001, 2002, and never address uh, how to look at, the, at what we did in Iraq based on what we know now. Uh, is that your experience in talking to other people in the administration, or are other people in the administration willing to uh, acknowledge that what we know now would have changed completely uh, what we did in Iraq? It is my impression for most of them. I will say this, that my boss, Colin Powell, uh, has some uh, reservations about what we did. Um, you got to remember, too, that uh, Condi Rice was batting above her weight. She was surrounded by 800-pound gorillas, Colin Powell on the one hand, Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney on the other hand. And she had, uh, she had a choice to make. She could try to discipline those 800-pound gorillas, which is what the NSA is supposed to do, or she could back off from it, uh, build her intimacy with the president, and uh, become secretary of state. Uh, I'll leave it to you to tell me which one of those choices she made. <laughs> uh, I kept trying to get at this issue of Saddam Hussein as a threat, and, and the distinction I tried to draw is, was he a threat to New York, especially on the day where we were marking 9-11, we have the, the, the death of Osama bin Laden, the president coming to New York, uh, the attack on New York. Uh, let's listen to what she said about that. Do you, so you think have, he was a threat to Lawrence, New Yorkers? You, you obviously have a very different view than the UN Security Council. Do you you think obviously he was have the a very same different view. To New Yorkers you obviously have a very different. Was? You obviously have a very different view than those people who were flying the no-fly zones, uh, like the soldier who's in my class at Stanford, who was shot at by Saddam Hussein. So you may not view him as a threat. Uh, most of the world did. Colonel, in whatever way one would describe the threat of Saddam Hussein, did he represent a threat to the lives of anyone living in the United States? I don't think so. Um, to Kuwait, to Saudi Arabia perhaps, and he was balancing Iran, something we have to do now because we took him out. Um, I, I think the most preposterous thing I heard at Langley at the CIA when I was preparing Powell for the UN presentation in 2003 was that Saddam Hussein was going to fly little airplanes off, tramp steamers off the east coast of the United States, and those little airplanes were going to aerosol spray chemical and biological weapons on the United States. I almost fell off my chair when I was briefed on that by analysts out at the CIA. Now, we talked, I talked to Condoleezza Rice about the famous aluminum tubes, which she had said publicly uh, were used, the only reason for Saddam to have those is exclusively for nuclear weapons. She tried to get off that last night and say most likely uh, for nuclear weapons. There's a huge difference between exclusively and most likely. But the fact was, as it turned out, they were not capable of being used for nuclear weapons in any way. And Saddam made, was making no attempt to acquire anything else that you would need in addition to those tubes. Uh, those tubes were used for, uh, we now know, were used for, for rockets, for standard uh, weaponry. Uh, it, it's clinging to those kinds of details in the face of what we know now that is just so frustrating in trying to talk to her. Well, that is, that's an even more egregious example of an intelligence failure and lying than you might think. I've discovered doing my research post-2005 that what we had when we had the interagency meeting, the interagency intelligence meeting with George Tenet in the chair, 
was we had an orchestration by the CIA, by the DCI himself, apparently, to keep the Department of Energy man who dissented majorly against this interpretation of the aluminum tubes from coming to that meeting. And they succeeded. He was not at that meeting. And so George Tenet was able to get, without any opposition, an intelligence community consensus that excluded DOE that the tubes were for an active nuclear program. Had I known that at the time, I would have done what I wanted to do. I would have walked out of Langley and told the Secretary of State he could prepare his own presentation. Uh, I want to go to something David Kay said in Bob Woodward's book. It's one of the most famous quotes in Bob Woodward's book, David Kay being the weapons inspector we sent into Iraq to try to find this stuff uh, after the invasion. Uh, he said about Condi Rice, she was probably the worst national security advisor in modern times since the office was created. Worst national security advisor ever, uh, in effect. Uh, you know, I've thought about that. I've thought about the national security advisors we've had. It's not as if we've had a tremendous amount of great ones with great accomplishments to show. But it's hard to think of anyone who delivered a worse uh, performance in that capacity than Condoleezza Rice. I can harken back to McGeorge Bundy in the Vietnam conflict, and Bundy's pushing so hard for Johnson to escalate in 1965, and Henry Kissinger telling Nixon and Nixon agreeing that they needed to make the Chilean economy bounce and overthrow Allende in Chile in the 70s. Uh, but when it comes to doing the job the National Security Advisor has customarily been told to do, uh, that is, coordinate national security policy, discipline the decision-making system, I think I'd have to agree with that assessment. I think we have to have a longer discussion some night on McGeorge Bundy versus Henry Kissinger versus Condi Rice. That is absolutely where the debate would focus on who did the worst version of that job. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me.